What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the Germany Great Captains Epics, whatever you want to call them, training guides. So we are going to take a look first firstly at big time uh, Lothar Matthaus. Now this guy lads I think is my ultimate player on my ultimate wish list. If I was to get him I think he would replace Vieira. I know I go on about Vieira the whole time but I genuinely think that this guy would probably be super good for me. Now I know he's small and he is kind of like Kante in that he gets around the pitch um, but not as defensive as Kante, so that's something that we're going to take a look at here. But any time I've seen him play, and he was one of my favorite players in Pez 2021 as well, he was just, an, you know, always in my team, um, always there in the squad, ready to rock and roll. Would he replace Vieira? I'm not too sure, but I definitely would try, try, to, try to, to answer that question. Now, he does have unwavering form. He's locked on B rating as a big time, and of course, he does have some very nice player skills as well. First time shot is nice if you're playing him attack wise. Way to pass through passing, man mark and interception. So a nice mix between passing and defensive. He doesn't have one touch pass and he doesn't have blockers. So if you are playing him attacking, he's going to be missing out on one touch pass that you need to add to him. And if you are playing him defensively, you will probably need to add blocker. I would also probably add sliding tackle to him um, just to kind of have him a little bit more well rounded. And of course, the big thing between him and the likes of Vieira are somebody that you might be used to playing as a complete box-to-box -box defensive minded centre midfielder is that he is quite short for a centre midfielder over um, or under high balls compared to if you're used to playing with the likes of Casemiro, you're used to playing with Bellingham or Vieira or somebody like that. But we do have two different versions of him and we are going to get to the first one here, which is an extremely defensive build of him. Now, I've seen a couple of people use this build and I've seen a couple of people talk about this build as the ultimate build for him. I'm a little torn on it, right? While you do have a lot of positives in it, you are lacking in a little bit of dribbling and passing, I think, for a centre midfielder. Now, it depends, right? This card and this build is all about if you are using two very good centre midfielders or defensive midfielders that can kind of do everything. If you don't really play... I would say if you play kind of like Pep ball, if you play possession style Pep Guardiola football where it's positionless, right? Yes, I know that Rodri sits in the pocket a whole a lot of the time defensively and he links the center backs, sits in between the center backs. Sometimes they switch, switch to a three at the back or even the role that John, Ro John Stones was playing against Real Madrid where he's going more advanced into that pocket, right? I do think that Mataus is one of the best at doing that and I do think that having those defensive skills on him would be huge, especially because you've still got 80 low pass and 82 ball control with 80 acceleration, 95 stamina is huge, but I do feel that this card is slightly too defensive, right? I would probably alternate this a little bit and switch it up a little bit. I would probably cap all his defensive stats at 88. You're still going to get the boost that will give you the A form or the form arrow boost I know your tackling is going to be down, your aggression is going to be locked at that, but you will be getting the boost to the defensive awareness and engagement. But more importantly, that frees up eight points that you can use in a slightly better way while still having a very good defensive juggernaut. If you're able to switch between your center midfielders or your defensive midfielders at ease, very easily, right? And I would probably then decide what type of player you are, right? Um, if you like to pass the ball a lot, and I've said this in all of my reviews, if you like to pass the ball a lot and you don't want to waste 250,000 GP or take the gamble of putting one touch passing him, I do feel you need his low pass to be at least 85, okay? Um, especially for the type of player that he is. But I prob probably would prefer to throw it onto the dribbling and get his tight possession to 80. Um, and then obviously throw one onto the passing as well. The aerial strength with this one, this card is all about, in my opinion, right? This is to make the complete version of him. But this, this build of him is all about disrupting play. So, you know, we do need to have that aerial strength there as well to have the physical contact because he is um, not, the, not the tallest or the strongest player. But that is a fantastic box-to-box -box player that we will take a look at in a second as an alternative for a free version. I know you guys like that, um, where we'll take a look at Goretzka, who kind of trains up very similar to him, but Matthaus is just outperforms him pretty much everything, right? The next version we have of him is a more attack base. So you've got 10 into passing and dexterity, 12 into lower body to have a whopping 96 stamina. And again, you still have eight into defense. I think this is probably the more complete version of him. Now, if you do not need to focus too much on defense, I would cap that at maybe 75 tackling. You're still going to get the boost. No, I'd probably cap it at 80 aggression. Um, I'd pop five in and put all those stats at 80. Just on the off chance that you don't get the form error going your way, which often happens to me. 
and I would probably cap it at 80 there and then pop the rest on depending on how you wanted to play him right if you wanted to be able to hassle around the place you have enough speed and acceleration and acceleration there um but I would definitely or stamina I should say sorry but I would definitely probably pop on a few more to the dribbling to get that up or else I would just go all out with the passing and go to 90 passing that's kind of where I would go with him if you wanted the 97 rated version of him right 12 7 10 12 and 5 so yeah there's multiple versions of him as I said but it depends on the role I think that Matthaus is better off freed up a tiny bit from his defensive role and play him kind of like Patrick Vieira that's how I would play him so even if we were to take a look at Goretzka who is one of my favorite box-to-box -box players of all time in the game right He's got one touch pass and interception, but he's also got fighting spirit. And I know that Matthaus has got fighting spirit and interception as well, but he doesn't have one touch pass. And even though Goretzka only goes to a 92, you've got similar stats. You know, obviously they're not going to be as good as uh, Matthaus. You know, he's not going to have the passing or defensive capabilities with how you train him, but he is going to be extremely solid if you're looking to only spend 300,000 GP and you don't want to spin for those players. So yeah, for me, look, he is obviously going to be a monster, lads. He can play CB as well. I wouldn't bother playing him CB. But I definitely think as a kind of a box-to-box -box center midfielder, if you had Matthaus and you had Davids or you had Vieira and you don't want to play an anchorman, you don't want to play a passer in midfield, if you just want to get the ball up to your strikers as fast as possible, then this guy will not let you down. He's kind of like Kante. Um, that's how I would describe him, just not as defensive, but also not as, uh, you know, a little bit more comfortable on the ball with the low pass and the tight possession and the ball control. So yeah, that is it for me, lads. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe in this video if you enjoyed it. And if not, sorry to disappoint, but uh, we'll be back soon. And I hope to see you in a live chat and a live stream quite soon. So that is it for me. Look, at the end of the day, lads, all of these players that you're going to see here, all of these three, they're probably like end game, you know, meta players that you could have in your squad forever, right? The problem is, right, when you take a look at somebody like my squad, and this is why it's all about kind of perspective and where you are with your, your squad building, right? Like, for me, Makalele and Vieira. With Makalele there and Vieira, like, Mataus would be an, an upgrade in terms of, you know, stamina and in terms of uh, passing the ball forward and dribbling and stuff. But defensively, Vieira as my box-to-box -box just works for me. Do you know what I mean? And then on my bench, if I wanted to switch things up, I have a load of options on my bench that I could use, including Pedri, who is a whole player that I can have in a little bit more advanced of a role. Um, it depends on what players you have at your disposal, you know, and even failing that, we have Labotka that we can train up. We've got a lot of really good players that we can train up um, in that role. You know, you could have Declan Rice in there. You could have any of those guys that you want to have if you wanted to train up different players in each sp specific role. And even this version of Goretzka that we have here, um, that we got as a box to box you can see how he compares there so Goretzka is actually outperforming Vieira and a lot of stats there so it just depends your personal preference lads of what you're looking for in a squad so you know don't get too dis dis disheartened if you don't pack a player that you want there is a lot of good alternatives out there but that is it for me I'll be back later peace